It's a weird version of the music, somehow. Stop the music, stop the music. Okay, great, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, just discuss this. I, You know, th this is just going to be a lot of people screaming at each other if it's like everybody else posts about this. Have you ever had one of those technology days where you want to uh, just throw your computers and devices out the window? Today. Everything I've done, I've done six times. Making me crazy. Anyway, so I'm going to read the press release first on this. Uh, it says, uh, oh, sorry, that's, this is from um, back in November. And it says, Norway to decide if breeding of English Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels violates Norwegian law. So this is from back in November. It says, the... Um, English breeding of English Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels in Norway today does not meet the legal animal welfare criteria laid down in the Norwegian Animal Welfare Act of 2009. The Norwegian um, SPA, which is the Society for Protection of Animals, is now taking the Norwegian Kennel Club, two breeders clubs, and selected breeders to court. So this is uh, selected breeders that they took to court. This is the wording of the Norwegian... Animal Welfare Act is very strict, and I, I'm going to preface this with animals are looked at very differently in European countries than they are here in the U.S. Uh, we are pretty cruel and inhumane here compared to a lot of the um, European countries who uh, look at animal welfare much differently, and... Um, I was reading something about Norway doesn't even have uh, animal shelters because people never give up their pets. People take their, you know, they get their dog as a puppy or whatever and they keep them for life and they don't get rid of them when they move or have kids or get new furniture or whatever the excuses are. So the the animals are, are definitely looked at differently there than they are here. So that's one thing to take into consideration. Um, but the wording of the Norwegian Animal Welfare Act is very strict. Breeding must encourage characteristics which give robust animals which function well and have good health. Wouldn't it be nice if that were uh, a consideration in all breeding practices? Um, it is prohibited to pass on genes that influence the animal's physical or mental health in a negative way reduces the animal's ability to practice natural behavior or which evokes general ethical reactions. Paragraph 25, which pertains to breeding, was even strengthened in the new act of 2009. The unofficial translation of the relevant uh, provision... Um, oh, Lord, do I have it? It says... Uh, oh, it didn't print. Um, so... It, at, this was from back in November. It said it had not yet been tried in Norwegian courts, but the uh, Society to Protect Animals believes that some breeds have now accumulated so many serious health conditions that further breeding of them will constitute a breach of this provision of animal welfare. Um, therefore, the uh, Norwegian Society to Protect Animals is now taking legal steps towards selected breeders, clubs, and the Norwegian Kennel Club to have the content and limits of this provision interpreted, interpreted by the courts. At this point, uh, the Society to Protect Animals is of the opinion that a number of these breeds are too sick to continue breeding them. In addition, the lack of sufficient remaining genetic diversity, and this is key, uh, makes it impossible to breed robust and healthy animals within the remaining population in Norway. Uh, based on these facts, the NSPA believes that outcrossing of these breeds is the only available option that is in accordance with the relevant legislation in Norway. We believe that the dogs are bred unlawfully in Norway. The purpose of the law is to protect the animals from human atrocities, and what we see in this case is of major animal welfare concern. Uh, the CEO of the um, uh, Norway SPA. So that's where this 
comes from. Um, somebody says, I sent a long letter to the court. They have looked at the potential danger of backyard breeding, but the full file is only in Norwegian. Yeah, I, I read, I, I brought it up, and I was like, okay, 63 pages in Norwegian. Can't read that. Um, so this was uh, an article that was um, printed a day ago uh, based on what the courts came out with. It says, Norway has banned the selective breeding of British Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, interesting that it's two British breeds, um, after a court ruled that the practice is cruel and results in man-made health problems for the animals. And we're going to talk about that a little more. The Oslo District Court ruled on Monday that breeding the brachycephalic flat-faced dogs breaches the Scandinavian country's Animal Welfare Act. And it's not just because they're brachycephalic dogs. That's not the, the whole issue here. Um, the landmark ruling effectively bans the two iconic dog breeds that originate in Britain, with the British Bulldog being the national animal of the United Kingdom. Interesting. Um, Oslo District Court has ruled that breeding the dogs uh, breaches the Scandinavian country's Animal Welfare Act. The case was taken to court by Animal Protection Norway in 2018, so only took four years, uh, which sued the Norwegian Kennel Club, the Norwegian Cavalier Club, the Norwegian Bulldog Club, and six breeders of English Bulldog and Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. So it was against these uh, specific breeders. Since then, in July 2021, the Norwegian Parliament voted to amend the wording of the breeding clause in Norway's Animal Welfare Act to say that the NKK, which is their kennel club, Norwegian Kennel Club, breeder groups and private breeders were responsible for breeding healthy animals. Wouldn't that be nice to have laws that say if you're going to breed, it is your responsibility to breed healthy animals and to take non-healthy animals out of your breeding lines. Um, lawyers representing the animal rights group successfully argued for the ban, saying that because of the history of selective breeding in the country, none of the animals currently living in Norway can be considered healthy. This is where we get into... Uh, a huge divide are we and I don't think that they should have said lawyers representing the animal rights group they're not an animal rights group as much as they're an animal welfare group they're concerned about health and welfare um, they're not saying that all dogs uh, you know animal rights would be things like um, animals have the right to, I mean it is sort of animal rights but animals have the right to uh, a warm dry environment animals have the right to be fed um, healthy nutritious meals but um, that's a that's a whole different argument but um, therefore uh, because none of the animals currently living in Norway are considered healthy uh, none can be used ethically for breeding purposes that was their argument um, the person in charge of the animal welfare group, the CEO, said this is first and foremost a victory for our dogs. It is a historic verdict that attracts international attention. Yes, it does. The man-made health problems of the bulldog have been known since the early 20th century, but dogs have the right to be bred healthy, she said. Uh, but the Kennel Club spoke out against the ruling with the group contesting the idea that the decision was made to protect the welfare of the dogs. They, the Kennel Club said, we are disappointed and surprised. From our point of view, it is far from obvious that this is a strengthening of the dog's welfare. The Norwegian Kennel Club, the breed clubs, and the six breeders are, of course, aware of the health challenges in these breeds. That's why we have been working hard to improve the health situation. We have strict health requirements for the various breeds, and we work closely with specialists and research institutions to ensure that breeding goes in the right direction health-wise. The verdict from the Oslo District Court also recognizes that this party are the best practices among breeders in a health perspective. And I'm going to interject something about the American Kennel Club. The 90, no, 125 Cavalier King Charles Spaniels that we went to the auction for back, oh God, 2014-ish, uh, where all the dogs were sold at the dog auction in Missouri. Those dogs came from an AKC breeder of merit. So let me tell you, the Kennel Club here at least does not do a good job regulating and enforcing good breeding practices. I would hope that in Norway, the Kennel Club is doing a better job. But if they're anything like the one here, 
they're not doing a good job at enforcing and regulating. So, you know, we'll take that with a grain of salt. Um, since it's still allowed to import and own the breeds, so they're not banning the breeds from the country, you can still import them, you can own them, you just can't breed them there. And these are very popular breeds, uh, this, so this is coming from the Kennel Club. Uh, they believe that people will continue to buy them, but instead of getting them from uh, responsible breeders, they'll be getting them from irresponsible breeders and breeders from countries which have a lower health standard than the ones connected to the Norwegian Kennel Club and the breed clubs in Norway. Again, we need to know how strict the Norwegian Kennel Club is in regulating those breeders. We don't know. So, they said, for us, it is obvious that the answer to solving the health challenges lies in working with registered dogs. In this way, we can ensure that healthy animals are used in breeding and that the sick are excluded. Um, uh, the Health, Welfare, and Breeder Services executive at the UK's Kennel Club said, we are concerned about this blanket breeding ban in Norway and don't believe it is a solution to prevent poor breeding practices or any of the complex health issues some Bulldogs and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels can face. This absolute approach, which will be difficult to enforce, could further fuel the ongoing crisis of irresponsible breeders, illegal puppy smuggling, and uninformed puppy buyers, and actually worsen the issues the legislation seeks to address. And I have to say that uninformed puppy buyers is a huge piece of this puzzle. I can't tell you how many people would come to me, because I'm kind of the cavalier doc, with their cavaliers that they got from backyard breeders, puppy mills, pet stores, and had done zero research on the breed, and then they're flabbergasted to find out that, oh, they have brachycephalic airway syndrome, they have PSOM, SM, CM, MVD, pick your initials, they have no clue. So part of this problem stems from the fact that pet owners and puppy buyers are not doing their research. And if they were, then there would be more clamoring for, hey, let's get puppies, for, uh, this goes for cats too, you know, Maine Coons, Ragdolls, Siamese, all the, the purebred cats, we get the same issues going on, folks. Um, so, uh, I've got some more, oh, maybe this is part of the same article, I don't know. Um, so, we know outright that breed bans don't work. We've seen this in the UK where attempts were made in 1991 with the Dangerous Dogs Act. This was simply served to, has simply served to drive the breeding of these dogs underground, leading to large numbers of unregistered animals where it is impossible to reach the breeders or buyers of these dogs or have any impact on the breed's health and welfare. It can also further fuel the crisis of Ill illegally bred and imported dogs. We believe a more effective approach is to continue to work collaboratively with breeders, vets, scientists, and welfare organizations to research, understand, and take evidence-based action via tools like the Respiratory Function Grading Scheme for Bulldogs. Uh, I know there's a, a big genetics group looking at SM and CM and MVD in UK in the Cavaliers. Um, so that we can reduce and ultimately eliminate the health problems these breeds can face and to educate and influence uninformed puppy buyers and breeders. Selective breeding can lead to a wide range of health problems for the dogs with their owner sometimes not being aware that they are suffering. Um, so, and I, it didn't print out, it makes me mad, but uh, I, I did find some studies with the Cavaliers. Actually, it was a study of a lot of different breeds but they were looking at um, how uh, closely the genetics were inherited in breeds of dogs, and you, you want a low number. And um, the average for purebred dogs was, and I have no idea what this number means, but it was 0.24, um, which means there's when you look at certain breeds, their genetic diversity is not very big. Like you want it to be something like uh, 0. 0.00 something or 0. 0.06. The average for purebred dogs across the board was 0. 0.24. For the Cavaliers, it was 0. 0.41. What that says is we don't have genetic diversity. And when you don't have genetic diversity and you're breeding animals that are carrying 
genes for defects like SM or CM or MVD or brachycephalic airway syndrome, if you aren't testing and if you aren't using parents who are clear of those diseases, you are perpetuating the problem. With that said, I had a lot of clients who went through the, the trouble uh, and expense of finding highly qualified breeders, highly qualified breeders who did all the genetic testing, did their MRIs for SM and CM, you know, had their parents uh, echocardiogrammed every six months, and were removing dogs from their breeding programs the way they needed to based on heritability and things that would pop up. And unfortunately, sometimes you don't know, is this dog going to develop a heart murmur at age seven and it's already been used for breeding from age two and a half to six and a half. You may not know you have a problem until you find out you have a problem. The only thing you can do at that point is to take them out of the, the, the breeding pool. Unfortunately, any offspring got some genes. So it's a long process. It's not something where you can uh, run out and buy two dogs from genetically tested lines and know 100% sure that they are going to produce 100% clear puppies. Genetics is just, you know, there's, there's a lot more to it. So, uh, yeah, if the animal clubs and AKC won't self-regulate, then what well, animal welfare law is necessary? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a tough road. Um, I saw one person who said, well, puppy mills don't really exist in the U.S. I don't know, I don't know what rock that person is hiding under because, yeah, we got a lot of them. Um, so it, this, is, this is a huge discussion and a lot of emotion are wrapped, wrapped around it. I think uh, I understand what they're trying to do in Norway. I don't know if this is the way to do it. I understand what they're trying to do. They're, they're across the board saying, hey, these animals are not healthy. And uh, I know there was a huge scuttlebutt, actually not all that long ago, with uh, one of the Cavaliers, uh, a breeding male who was winning everything on the show circuit. The owner had done an MRI, knew the dog had SM, and continued to breed the dog, knowing that. So when you have unscrupulous people who are only about the money, uh, it's, it's a no-win for the dogs. And all of, all of our dogs have had SM, CM. We've gone through an awful lot of MDD in this house. Uh, I would not ban the breed. I would not say that my dogs suffer. Um, I think it is very very important for anyone who buys any of these breeds. And I, I'm, it, I find it fascinating that they banned the British Bulldog, but not the French Bulldog, because talk about problems, big problems. And those are so popular, so popular. And so we're seeing more and more and more issues with them as well. So it is, it is difficult. And uh, a reputable breeder who is doing all of that testing, MRIs are a couple thousand dollars a piece. So you got an MRI every single dog that's going to go through your breeding program and want to make sure that the offspring get MRI'd uh, once they've become adults, it's a lot of money. And then you end up having to sell those puppies for thousands and thousands of dollars because your investment is so big. People who, the breeders who really want to improve their breeds, no matter what the breed is, in every breed, every breed has genetic problems. They all do. Um, so good breeders, they're doing the testing. There aren't that many of them. There aren't that many people who are willing to put in the time, effort, and money to succeed at making the breeds better. So we need more of those people. We need some sort of veterinary support to be able to get those things for those breeders done at more reasonable costs so that we can improve the genetics of the breeds. And we need to, to bring in outside lines. I, I mean, I don't know about Cavaliers in other countries. Clearly Norway says that theirs aren't healthy. I know there's a lot in the UK that are not healthy. There's a 
boatload here in the U.S. that have issues. So th there's no easy answer for this. Yeah, Linwood, Woodview, Connie. Well, uh, Forrest came from Connie. So Connie does all the breed testing and uh, Linwood Farm. I mean, they, they do all the testing. They do everything right. And we still ended up with Forrest, who has quite a few issues. That's kind of the point. Even when you're doing everything right, genetics can put themselves together in such a way that you end up with a, ooh, certainly want to take that one out of the gene pool. Um, so needless to say, Forrest will not be a breeding dog, <laughs> even though he's cute. Um, so you have to be willing uh, to take those dogs out of the breeding program. You have to be willing to make sure they are not going to go to a situation where somebody might unscrupulously use them for breeding. That's how we got Stuart. He's a show dog. He was imported from Scotland, developed a heart murmur, can't be bred. But the, his owner was willing to take that loss because she wasn't willing to put him into a breeding program that would be bad for the breed. So, uh, you know, yep, you're, we're the boots on the ground. We have to preach to others. So, uh, but just be very careful with this conversation because it's all over, you know, all the dog groups right now. Um, people have very, very strong opinions about this from a lot of different uh, perspectives. And um, I'm not sure how I feel about banning breeding across the board. I don't think that's really the way to go. Um, and I'm certainly not for banning the breeds because they're wonderful dogs. And um, I think that those of us who love our breed, whether you're a bulldog person or a poodle person or a Dalmatian person, whatever your breed is, you need to be an advocate for better health standards, better breeding, better genetic standards for your breed um, and really advocate and try to teach others what the breed issues are, how to find out about them. I mean, doing Embark testing on your dogs or base paws testing on your cats can tell you, look, th these are the genetic carry carrying genes that they've got. These are the genes they've got. This is a problem. You don't want to breed this animal. Good to know. So if you're a breeder, do the testing. Find out. Um, wondered why bulldogs and not Frenchies and why not pugs or Pekingese. Apparently pugs are next on the list. Uh, I read something saying the pugs are going to be next. So we'll see. Um, and somebody else had an interesting statement that I kind of liked uh, that said uh, we should have, instead of just having beauty contests for our dogs, because that's really what it is when you're showing your dog, it's a beauty contest. Um, and I saw this back in the late 80s with the German Shepherds. Uh, we had a client who was a German Shepherd breeder and judge. And that was when the Shepherds started being so low in the back. I, like Literally, those dogs look like they're walking up a 90 degree angle. They're, they're just so low in the back end. And I remember having discussions way back then. Why are they breeding these German Shepherds with these horrible hind ends? These dogs can barely walk. And she was a national judge. And that's what she was breeding, and that's what she was pinning in the show ring. And so somebody brought up a good point. Why don't we do more field trials with these dogs? Cavaliers are a hunting dog. I don't, I don't really know what bulldogs were bred to do. Maybe some bulldog people can tell me. Uh, but, um, you know, if we looked at function over beauty or form, um, I think that we would get a lot further in having dogs with less genetic issues. Um, and so the argument with the pug was that, that well, they were bred to be a lap dog. <laughs> so that's what have shows on who's the best lap dog. You know what? A good lap dog isn't going to be snoring louder than you. And if his airway was open, he'd be able to breathe. So, you know, these, these guys, and I think they're picking on the brachycephalics because the brachycephalic airway syndrome is a huge issue and a lot of owners don't even understand what it is or that their dog has it. Um, they don't understand the, the breathing difficulties for these dogs. And so part of it is educating the pet owner and the puppy buyer. 
So, yeah, could never do confirmation. Yeah, me either. They're bred for napping and snacking. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. All yours did agility. That's cool. That is very cool. Because bulldogs, part of the problem with bulldogs is they're bored by C-section. They got tiny hineys, big heads and shoulders. And you know what? That goes back to the 80s when I was, when I got into veterinary school in 1980 my roommate was an intern, a veterinary intern, who had just graduated from the Georgia Veterinary College. And so she was doing her internship at Illinois. And so she was a huge Bulldog fan because of the Georgia Bulldogs. But she told me way back then, yeah, well, they all have to be born by C-section. Like, if you're going to have Bulldogs, it's always a C-section because they got that Mack truck front end and that little tiny rear end and so the puppies can't get out any other way. I personally, I think having a breed where the only way you can get the puppies out is by C-section. We should be breeding against that. We should be making bigger butts and smaller shoulders and smaller heads. So anyway, and I, I have nothing against Bulldogs, French, English, American. I have nothing against them. I'm just saying that we've done the breed of disservice with going for a look, just like with the German Shepherds having them so low in the back end. So every breed has its issues, and um, whatever your breed is, I my recommendation would be to work toward learning about your breed, educating people about your breed, knowing what the genetic issues and problems are for your breed, and also understanding when your pet is not comfortable. If you have a brachycephalic breed, summer, 95 degrees, 95 percent humidity. Don't go outside. Really hard on those guys. You have to understand what your animal is dealing with. And I, I think I think that's what the Norwegians were trying to get at. It's just a interesting way to do it. Interesting way. Yeah, done them a disservice for sure. There's a very small number of bulldog breeders who are breeding for better health and I wish they would. Um, French bulldogs are the barroom bully of dog parks. Just saying, <laughs> they can be. <laughs> Always cringe when they announce the dog of the year. Mm. Yeah, you don't want your breed to get popular. Cavaliers were not popular for many years, and then once they got popular, they get, you know, breeds get ruined. Happened with the Dalmatians after the 101 Dalmatians movie came out. So, that's the way it goes. All right, I've bored you long enough with my opinion on this subject. <laughs> Gwen made me do it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Foundation Quarter Horse. Man, Quarter Horses, they've screwed up that breed. See, it's even in the horses. That that breed, what a mess. What a mess. Some of the, Those horses are so crippled. The ones that they breed for halter that aren't even rideable, they can barely move. They're double muscled. Terrible. Done the same thing with actually some cattle breeds as well. The double muscling. Bad news. Bad news. This is the most interesting version of this music. All right, everybody have a great day. Don't forget, next week is our dental health week. We will be on 10.30 a.m. Monday through Friday next week. We have a dental expert. I can't wait to talk to him. Uh, tons of information on dental health. It is uh, Dental Health Month.